Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Dion van Aert and if you've been following our webinar series, you would recognize Super Tigger, who's been my friend for the last, how many weeks have we been on lockdown? Too long. Six Too seven. long. Yeah. <laughs> Don't count it anymore. Yeah. But in any case, so we're back this week to do another exciting uh, free training webinar with you um, this afternoon on getting data from your SciTech system um, at home. So thanks, Tigger. Uh, let's, let's get to it. So <laughs> with me today is the very lovely Anne Fletcher. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Anne. Um, are you are Psychic product manager. Or I am. How are you doing this afternoon? Yeah, good, thank you very much. It's nice to see some friendly faces. That's good, good. All the way from Sandbatch. Yep, sunny countryside Sandbatch. Makes a change to Manchester. <laughs> Is it always sunny? <laughs> always in Sandbatch, too. <laughs> and then we have Tim Harrison, uh, one of our system architects. Good afternoon, Tim. Hello, Dion. Yes, nice to be here. Hello, everyone. And you're all the way from Norwich. Oh, what, what, not exactly Norwich. Just south of Norwich in a little uh, quaint town called Beckles. Okay, so we all, and I'm, by the way, and I'm, I'm here from um, Holmes Chapel, actually not far from, from Anne. So we're all in the country. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. Houses are cheaper here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to start with you. Um, the over this period of time, we've been talking to a lot of customers. What do you see? What what has changed in the lives of our customers? It's an interesting one talking to uh, a lot of different people. Um, some people have had to change a lot. Some people haven't actually changed that much. So um, a lot of places most of sales and management are now working from home but production is still carrying on a lot of places the production's actually ramped up quite significantly but luckily those people working on the plant floors and production lines are quite segregated anyway so they've not had to do much with social distancing that way um but we do have a lot of customers that are looking to remotely access their data so they've had to work from home um, and they're now looking at ways to implement, um, you know, new ways of doing that and getting that information and being able to do that from the safety of their own houses. Yeah, and I suppose it's technology that we've had, but I don't think it's been exploited as much. And, and we're seeing a, a huge uptake at the moment of people actually now actively pursuing this and seeing what, what, is, what is possible uh, yeah, with definitely. what you have. Yeah, um, I think the sort of situation at the moment has pushed a lot of people to maybe upgrade or do things that they were putting off but haven't really got much of a choice now. So um, we have had a project that Tim's been working on recently with one of our account managers um, for a tunneling company. Um, and they're really looking to remotely access the information that they, they have on that. So um, Tim, I don't know if you want to go into a bit more information. Yeah, thanks, Anne. Yeah, they, they 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 sort of contacted us recently and said, you know, they they have a requirement in that they can't get to um, the control room. Um, this is obviously based on the situation we're all finding ourselves uh, currently. Um, so they actually want a SCADA a remote SCADA access. Um, this would be for people like the engineers or supervisors that are actually um, based at home and uh, give them access to be able to almost feel like they're in front of that control room PC. So they would see the Cytec uh, mimics, um, be able to look at the alarms, uh, do all the good stuff that you would normally do uh, while being in a control room. And I suppose the key thing there is to do it in a, in a, in a safe uh, way. I mean, cybersecurity is most probably the biggest danger here because the first thing that comes to mind is people just say, let's just open up a VPN into the plant, but it's most probably not the most wise thing to do. Yes, exactly, Dion. Uh, I mean, it's only, you only have to look or Google this and you'll find that, you know, it's, it's a very real concern um, when, when you are 
you know exposing data or allowing connections into into uh, into your site so there it has to be done properly and it has to be done securely and this is exactly what this this solution um, provides okay so so how do you what do we do okay so if I can I'm I'm just going to share my my screen with you and um, we'd like to obviously talk to you a little bit about um, Cytic Anywhere. So hopefully you can see my screen. Um, yes. Great stuff. So for this, for this customer and for any customer who really needs to extend the reach of their control room out to remote locations, whether that be uh, home workers or even just a team of maintenance engineers who are traveling around the country, this is what we would look at doing. So here is a, um, and I sort of emphasize the word secure, it's a, a secure architecture whereby, um, well, I'll start on the left-hand side of the screen. This is your HMI SCADA network. So this would be the network of your control room, essentially. This could be the OT network. Um, and obviously there may be a little bit more switches and hubs between between that and actually the, the demilitarized zone. But essentially the SciTech SCADA is running on the HMI control network. This is where we would put a remote desktop server. This would be the machine, the PC that would be running your SciTech anywhere. And essentially it functions, its main purpose is to function as a Windows terminal server so that clients, even clients local to the network, so even those that are on the actual control network could still make use of this um, RDS server. Coming up to the middle of the page, we have firewalls. It's obviously very important from a secure architecture point of view to, to layer your network. Essentially, you, you're mitigating against an attack so that if someone does gain access um, in between two firewalls, they can't get they, they can't go out of that. They, they, they are contained within the firewalls. So we have a firewall between our control network and the DMZ, the demilitarized zone. Um, this you will see, we have a Cytec Anywhere Secure Gateway node. Th this machine's primary purpose is to accept HTTPS, Secure Socket Layer um, Communication from the other side of the DMZ, which is the what, what we show is the business network, but this could be the internet. In fact, this would most likely be the internet on the other side of this firewall. So a business network user is not really an, a business network user, it's me working from home, or it's uh, someone who's traveling around the country um, and is signing on to the public, a public uh, internet. So, the, the connectivity would be you would open up your web browser, connect through, it would authenticate you. It's important that it knows who you are. So there's a username and password to be able to um, grant access, to be granted access onto this gateway PC. The gateway PC will forward you onto the RD, RDS terminal server where you still have to authenticate again because you are a user that Cytec needs to know about. Now, even if you're using domain security, the domain needs to know about you in order to access this box. Okay, great. So the on the client in Tim, uh, do you, you said web browser. Is it any web browser? Do you need to, need to install a special add-in into your web browser? So do you know, it's, uh, it's a web browser that supports HTML5. So as long as it's an HTML5 browser, which to my knowledge, most of them are. So you could be using an iPad and using Safari. You could be using Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Edge. You know, these are just a few um, that you can use. And, 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 and worth pointing out at the moment that uh, Aviva have recognized that there's quite a big demand for remote access now, um, and they are offering SciTech um, access anywhere free of charge until the end of June. Um, so it might be worth people having a look at that. Okay. So so and so customers so customers can make use of this they just contact us i'm assuming and yeah, so, uh, uh, if you either contact your account managers or myself we can get you in contact with the right people okay. and before we move on dion i'll just just highlight can you see 
we're actually only enabling a, uh, a single port here, port 443, and we're only enabling a single port on this side of the firewall, 8080. So these can all be managed very safely. Right, right, okay. Brilliant, brilliant. So, I mean, we talked about needing access from the monitor and control side of things, but what about sort of managers and supervisors that need to get access to data to make decisions on, you know, are they hitting their KPIs? Are they meeting their daily quotas? How do we help customers from that perspective? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, Anne, and, and that's a question that we get asked a lot as well. So these are um, users who just say, look, I, I'm not looking to access the SCADA, you know, that is for someone else. I'm now, uh, I need to access that data because I need to um, sort of have some way of analyzing what is happening, what has happened, so I can uh, make decisions there and then. So it's somebody like a supervisor or or a manager that to, to see how's production going or a maintenance person to see what the condition is of a machine. Exactly. Kind of yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Spot on. So for that, um, we'll we'll have a little talk about this webinar is about the, obviously the historian and sort of client options that go with that type of requirement. So at the moment, I've just kind of pulled up a very simplified architecture. Um, where I'm actually showing a Cytex guider machine uh, running here. And uh, I have a historian. This is on the sort of same network, same, um, could be OT or even IT, but essentially this is what we call an on-premise, the Aviva historian on-premise um, historian. So, and, why is, so just to interrupt you, why would a historian be of, of interest in this kind of scenario? So the idea is the honor that obviously we know that SCADA systems have been able to log data um, very effectively, very, um, very well for many years now, but it's about being able to view that information when you are sort of uh, on the corporate network or you are maybe, um, you know, so you're not an actual SCADA or, or control room user. You know, the only way that most people are able to visualize these sort of SCADA trends as if they have the SCADA software installed on their PC. So that's not what we really want to do. We want to sort of be able to um, have, have a historian that can take data from multiple sources. So I'm just showing a Cytex server here, but you could have a, a DCS on, on site and also be, you know, be sending data or a, a you know, various Schneider PLCs or other PLC vendors. So this historian could be the collector for the entire site. For so it's like a central repository that everybody can go to get their data. Yes. And then of course, once that data is within that repository, you know, there are, there are various ways that you can actually visualize that depending on the requirements from the client. Um, so this, the way this would work is that you would um, install Cytec Historian Connector on this machine and the data would travel from Cytec Server to the historian and be logged there. And this is one of the options you could do. Um, we will look at that uh, after this. The other way is maybe not take the data to the on-premise on historian, but rather go to Viva Insight, which is the cloud-hosted software as a solution historian so those are two sort of options that, and, that we and have the cloud sorry sorry to interrupt you tim while we're talking about the cloud solution is it will automatically make the data obviously available to anybody anywhere that is connected to the internet exactly exactly so you can see here that we're actually we're trying to show um uh, how this data would go out and still be secure. So, you know, we have our firewalls, we have our demilitarized zone, we have a, um, a piece of free sort of lightweight software called DMZ secure link. This is all about protecting the, the, the enterprise from, from sort of cyber, cyber security. So once you've, once you've put that data out onto Viva Insight, which you know it is held securely, it is encrypted, but it does make it a lot easier for people to access that data, you know, very easily, very quickly, as opposed to um, configuring the firewalls and the IT um, authentication to be able to then have a user coming in and actually accessing this 
on-premise historian. So if I, if I understand that right, then Tim, it means that in option B that you have, if you just use the historian, user would still need to come in via a VPN. They are protected in a way because you're not going directly onto your SCADA server, but you still need to make that VPN connection. With option A, if you use the insight option, yes, uh, you don't store the data. It likely goes to the cloud and it's immediately available. Securely. Yes, that's, but, yeah, that, but, is, that is spot on. But what about the case where I, I actually want the best of both worlds. I want on-site to have good data available, but I also want to make it available in cloud. Is that, is that an option? Yes, it is. So if I go to my next slide, option C, this is an option where you still have the Cytex Guider, you have the on-premise historian. So I basically send my data through the connector to historian. I configure my historian for replication and that data then passes out through my DMZ up to Aviva Insight. So my historian on-premise, my Aviva historian on-premise is actually replicating its data to Aviva Insight. So my users uh, on the corporate network and control network have the ability to view this data, to use their client tools to view the historian data. But I also have remote um, international users being able to view the information as well. Okay. Um, all right. So how, how easy is it to do this kind of thing? Okay. I'm glad you asked that. So what I did was I thought, one of the best places to start is you sort of, what is the Cytic Historian Connector and how easy is it to store in, install it? So the Historian Connector is um, a piece of lightweight software that you can uh, download from the support website, global support website, or it is also available on the Aviva Insight um, portal, the soft, you know, the cloud solution. There's a, a way of downloading the, the sort of software from there as well. And once you've copied it, it's license free. There is no license to, to use the actual Cytec Historian Connector. You, uh, it comes as a zip file. I unzipped it before I started this. Uh, you double click on the Cytec Connector and it is um, very quickly, will just run through. Um, as you can see, that allows you to publish data to the uh, Aviva Historian or the Aviva Insight. So I'll just let that finish. And it is worth pointing out that this is a free of charge um, connector that you get with Cytec. Yes, exactly, Anne. Yeah, it's free. So, so I'm actually using this um, with just Cytec running as a demo. So I'm, I haven't even licensed um, Cytec. So yeah, so now that we've installed the software, I can actually now take you through to the demo. So for this, I'm going to switch to my Cytec. So I have got Cytec 2018R2 running on a virtual machine. Uh, it's the example project. Many of you will, will recognize it. Um, I have the connector installed. And at this point, I have got it running. But we're going to go through some of the setup for this to happen. So uh, there is a help document, obviously, as part of the connector that you can go through. But I'm here to help with that. So. The first things to do is come to your Cytec project. This is the example project. First thing we need to do is just enable the CT API. By default, when you install Cytec, this is not uh, enabled. So we just need to make it a one to allow the remote access. Save that. Next place to go is come to your databases. And for your variable alarm and trends, you need to, again, by default, the historize column is not actually enabled by default. It's normally unchecked. So you need to come in and check it, and that will then give you the, you'll be able to view your historize column. Setting this any tag, so in the example project, some are set by default, but setting any to true will flag that trend alarm or variable, so depending on which database you're doing this in, it will flag it to the connector to be sent to the historian. Once you've done that, um, you just need to have a user, a user on the system. So I'm going to use the engineer, which is a built-in uh, user. I'm going to use that now to show you when I, when I set up the connector. And that is it. So it's a CT API remote, setting the true um, flags in the historized column 
and that is it. Now I can come to my connector. I've installed it, it's up and running. I click on settings and I just have to point it to my primary Cytex server. It's running as a standalone. This is the example project, so it's just using a loopback um, IP address. So I assume it will work with a redundant setup of Cytex as well. Yes, Dion, exactly. It has the capability of having the primary and the state standby IP address um, entered into here so that it, no matter which one is active, it will be forwarding data through to the uh, destination, whether that be the on-premise Aviva historian or the Aviva Insight. Um, I have to give it a username and password, which is, like I said, engineer. The next tab to configure is where would I like to send this data? Do I want to send it to the historian on-premise or to the Aviva Insight? So I've chosen my historian premise, which is running on a different machine. So that's running on a different virtual machine and I have a username and password that grants me access to that historian SQL server. The next two tabs, you can leave it default, but essentially it allows you to configure where do you wanna um, have the store and forward path. So if my historian is not reachable by my connector, it will just log the data locally until the historian uh, is available again, and then it will just forward the data. Um, it means uh, you, you won't lose data by switching historian off. Exactly. I mean, there, there's always going to be some sort of maintenance maybe needing to be done. Um, there could be just a network um, a mishap, you know, maybe for a short period of time, maybe for a long period of time. Either way, the data will be cached locally onto the hard drive. And then as soon as it's notified that the historian is available <clears throat> and online, then it will forward that data. And there's a few more tweak, tweaking settings that you can actually do. But the defaults generally they work. Uh, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. I've I've left I've left these default settings um, when when I saw the connector. So yes, they, they will work. Um, starting the connector, it will um, it will just tell you if it's online or not. So the the status sort of um, is very very um, illustrative, and and can you know it's quite quite clearly you'll see that this is up and running. Um, and on the storage machine, what, what kind of setup do, does one have to do on the storage machine? Okay, so I'll just go to the to my historian machine now. Um, so there's my historian. So that's my historian running on a different machine. Uh, essentially, it's historian, any version of historian from 2014 R2, SP1, Service Pack 1, uh, Patch 1 is the historian that you need at least. We are now on historian 2020. So, um, you know, it gives you uh, a lot of options, obviously to, to utilize any of those versions of historian that you might have. And- So, so you basically just install the Aviva historian out of the box? Yes, straight out of the box. This is a standard uh, Aviva historian. And because my connector is running on my other virtual machine, I can come to my data acquisition tab and I can see that I've got a Cytec connector that is sending 47 tags to, to my historian here. Okay, so actually you just monitor that the thing is working here. You actually, there's no real setup on this end. Yeah. That's and, right. and, and only the install of the historian basically. Yes, exactly. That's, and that, that is all that um, you need to do. I think I timed it when I first set it up, and I think it took me just under sort of 10 minutes, you know, just to double check that everything was uh, as it should be with all those settings, um, selecting the tags uh, for true in the historize, and yep, within 10 minutes, I'm logging data to the historian very, very easily. I'm like the good news fairy today with special offers and uh, exciting things, but if uh, any of you or your customers have got a SciTech historian, and you want to move over to the Aviva historian, there is actually a special offer in place at the moment where you can trade in your existing Cytec historian and upgrade to the Aviva at a lower cost. Okay, that's, that's good to know. And so what about the, the option of going to the cloud? How do you do that? Yeah, that's a good question. I'll, I'll switch to that now. So what I have is a I have my Cytec, Cytec example project. 
again running on a on a virtual machine here and i have done the same setup so i've got basically um i've, I've modified the ct api remote to be true i have the connector status running here so let's just go into the settings uh, everything is everything is the same for the site excada um, but for my destination, I've actually selected Insight Cloud. When I do this, it does check that I have a license, um, a Citic license. So I'm using a, a demo license from, from Aviva, but nevertheless, it does check for a license at this point. And then um, there's a button here that just says register. Register your solution which I've now done and actually it, it just required an email and a password and I was able to register this um, connector with Insight. And that's all that had to change. All the other settings can be left as is. Okay, so, now, sorry, Tim. Go I'm ahead. Sure you, uh, sorry, I'm sure, I'm sure you, sh you would have done, you would have needed to do something on the cloud side. Yeah. So um, actually the, the connector allows you to, to register from, from that setting, but yes, from here. So you could actually, if, you, so the connector will register you with the cloud and basically you're up and running. Yes, the, the, but, but for those that, um, so actually when I did it, I did actually start here to be fair, Dion. So I came to insight.connect.aviva.com and I actually went up here, need an account, sign up now. We'll, we'll come back to the try it free um, shortly, but I came to the need an account, sign up now. And uh, with, with being in the UK, I, I actually chose Europe as the data center. And then I just basically uh, entered a email address, an email address, uh, confirmed a password and put my first name, last name. And that's all I needed to register with Aviva uh, to give me 45 days uh, trial, a 45 day trial period. Okay. So, so you basically, sorry, trial means you, for 45 days, you can use the Aviva Insight. Yes, yeah, you'll be able to log um, tags to the Aviva Insight and be able to actually view that data using the um, web client you know, through the web interface. Right. Um, so, if so, I, so, so for the trial, if I just want to see what the results would look like, I saw there was try for free now. Yep. Let's go have a look at that. So from the insight.connect, let's go try it for free. So this kind of signs you in as like a, um, like a default user onto the demo demo site that Aviva have um, constructed in the in the US data center. So you'll see I'm on the dot com, the dot com data center. So here we go. So we, yeah, we've got, they've, they've already created some uh, saved content for the temperatures, um, some daily OEE calculations. There's even some uh, a news feed. That's the one really a uh, powerful part of using the Aviva Insight solution, the cloud hosted historian is because it starts to learn uh, your data and then it can actually start to uh, push out this newsfeed. Um, it does map, you know, you can actually view your, your data um, from geographic uh, sort of coordinates. Um, so Tim, if I'm trying this for free for 45 days, I can actually create this dashboard using my own data from my, my actual plant. Yeah, you can. And I've actually created some, some content from the SciTech. Would you like to see it? Yes, please. Okay, so I'll just sign out of that. And Tim, to be able to do this, do you have to be on the latest version of SciTech? No, Anne. Um, the... The connector supports Scitech version 7.2 Service Pack 5. Um, however, if you wanted to start sending data up to Aviva Insight, you would need um, Scitech 7.3 and onwards. We are 
we are finding that a lot of our customers are already upgrading their Citex. So we've got customers with 2015, um, 2016, 2018, and 2018 R2 all sort of um, utilizing this. So it certainly goes back quite a few versions, but you know, we would like to just recommend to most of our customers to try and upgrade to the latest. Okay. So I uh, signed into the EU. Dot. Yeah, I suppose that's also significant because uh, with the legislation and things like that, you you don't want to use the US, you want to use the the EU. Yeah, that's right, Dion. I mean, there are three data centers, you know, uh, America, um, Europe, and Australia. So Europe would be uh, sort of where we would most likely see a lot of our customers signing up with. Uh, so. So yeah, so I, I sort of got on early this morning after I set up the connector and started just to save some some content from my historian. I'm also getting um, some news feeds coming through where it's telling me something, certain PVs are flatlining. Um, I even put a comment down here uh, and it, it sort of flags it up and says, oh, I restarted Cytex Carter here. So that was my comment that I wrote in um, and it's sort of, giving us that sort of feed. I've got a couple of trends, uh, so I can obviously click on that, that trend, uh, have a look. Uh, I can obviously, you know, have a look at various data. I can even zoom in, zoom out. You know, it's all using the rollerball on my mouse at the moment. I can pull the screen to the left and the right. Um, it's really, really just so intuitive. You know, I can make a comment here um sort of you know so what happened here because obviously there's some flat flat lining going on there and i can obviously share that comment with my team and that will be saved now uh, on that so anyone viewing this trend will actually see this little annotation and go oh what's, what's going on there and click on it and then can actually see who who saved that comment and and what was it about but what we're finding is really um quite quite lovely and it's just it's just such a brilliant thing to have um, on the Aviva Insight solution is the ability to have graphics, actually putting graphics on a historian um, front end. It's just, you know, it's quite, quite mind boggling when you think about it, because we've always been used to just uh, analyzing, you know, streams of data, but now I can actually start to look at my historical data, but on a plant. Um, and the way I did this is um, obviously went into edit mode and um, I had some saved saved graphics for something that I thought would be useful. And I was able to just do drag that JPEG um, over here into this background image. So there is already one there, but I just dragged it in, accepted it, put it on here. And then from here, you can actually add tags quite easily. So I've got two tags here, ACO1 and ACO2. Um, and in fact, I, I'll, delete ACO02 for now, so I can just repeat what I did. So I've already got the level of the full milk. I now want the skim milk. This is my skim milk tag. Um, and I just drag it on. Drag it onto my canvas. Um, once it's on there, um, I'll just choose to modify it. I want it to sort of look uh, more or less the same as, as the one that I've already got. And I'll just stretch it, stretch it to, to sort of be the same same size. Um, once I'm here, I can actually click on properties and I can say, look, let's change the color to white to match what I've done. Um, I'd like sort of more hive information so I can actually see the tag as ACO2 here. Yep, I'm happy with that. I'll save that and job done. So, you know, this is just, um, oh, but I should actually touch on when, when you're saving your content as well, you can sort of give keywords. These keywords um, become searchable. So, so right now I can actually look for um, anything with the word level and suddenly I, I've got 13 descriptions of what could be level and I can actually come have a look to see if that's what I want and I can add that tag. So I can add a, an, I can add more tags to this graphic and obviously um, place them where they need to be. So it's, it's just so intuitive. It really is quite amazing. It's like kind of like a Google Google for the plant floor where you could say, I want to know 
what's the level, what's the temperature of something, and that information will just come to you. You don't have to go and look in a hierarchical structure or anything like that. Yes, that's right, because when you, uh, <clears throat> I'm sure you can remember, Dion, when you were looking at historical information, you'd have to type the SCADA tag, like, as it was represented. Maybe you could use, like, an asterisk to be like a wild card, but you had to know what you were looking for. With this, I can just type DEG, you know, and that would be the engineering units. You know, it's, it's just makes life so much easier for certainly supervisors and management um, wanting to view the data. And on top of that, I can actually uh, search for uh, any of my keywords that I've been saving um, and say, right, I'd like it, you know, to create a dashboard called Top Milk um, because you will start to create more and more content, you know, as you start to, um, to start to get a better idea of what you want to start looking at, what kind of uh, trends and the style of the trends, but then you'll start to be easily able to create dashboards and it just automatically creates that dashboard. So that's like putting a whole lot of different pieces of information that is displayed in different formats together onto, uh, yeah. onto the screen. Okay. Yeah, so the keywords kind of link this information. There needs to be some sort of um, relationship there. You know, when you, when you put a keyword, it's like, these are tank levels. Yep, this is the packaging, or this is the. Um, so, so as I as I create more content, it's gonna it's gonna help when I build this this dashboard. And then, of course, I want to save this dashboard, and I'll save it to anyone in my in my solution. Um, By the way, you know, I forgot to mention something in the beginning. Sure. If anybody has questions, there's a Q&A <laughs> thing at the bottom. I should have done it in the beginning. Sorry about that. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions out there, just pop them into the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. Um, and I believe with the um, with Insight as well, there's some add-on apps, things like overall equipment effectiveness, looking at condition management, and there's a whole lot of extras that you can do uh, that comes that comes as, as part of it. Yes, you know, this. I wonder if this would be a good opportunity since we have, um, well, yes, it, you can. So what it does is it gives you um, the ability to actually look at uh, equipment efficiency and OEE. So this is where you can actually use uh, tags from, from your system to actually know when it was down, when it was uh, uh, under maintenance and all those good things, in fact, the try it now, the try it now solution would uh, be a very good place to to look at that. Okay, that's uh, that's got uh, it already already set up. So any anybody out there who wants to see what this looks like, they can just go to that try it now and see the typical yeah. user user experience with dummy data. Yeah, 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 absolutely done. Is um, do we have any questions um? At the moment, by the way, no, there's no, there's no questions. Okay. Um, well, with that, um, I'll just sort of just go to the. So this is the try it, try it, free. I'll just go to equipment efficiency. Just wait for it to go up to there. Um, I think, here we go. It was the one above it, I think. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry, that's, I clicked on OE efficiency, didn't I? Yep. So I'll just, well, now we were going to come here anyway, so I'll just quickly yeah, yeah, fine. the OE efficiency. So here we go. So all locations, it also tells you mean time to repair, mean time between failure. Um, and reasons for downtime, I see. Top down. Downtime, occurrences, availability of your equipment. Yep. Um, and then, of course, like, like we were going to already, we're going to go to equipment efficiency here. And this is where you see your sort of um, equipment states, how long they've been uh, in downtime or running for. Uh, you can do some, you can actually split the events. You can actually... Um, if you know that something wasn't quite running when it uh, when it shows that it was, you can actually split the event. 
um, you know, yeah, you can do it. You can sort of merge these two events, split them. Um, okay. Like you say, that does a lot of stuff. Yeah, KPIs, top top five reasons. Really well, interesting. So once again, the access with this is just normal web browser, no add-ins. You just connect to the uh, to the cloud and the to the internet, and there you go. Yeah, yeah, it's as simple as that. Really, is nothing to install on your on your computer as a as a from a remote user uh, for data data analyzing. Okay, thank you very much, um, Tim. Thank you very much for that. Um, Oh, there we're back on. <laughs> I'm in the middle. Am I on everybody's screen? In uh, oh, depends on your screen size. But you guys are sitting above and below me at the moment. I don't know why. <laughs> but in any case, uh, thanks, uh, Tim. Brilliant uh, a bit of training there for us. Thanks for joining us. And yeah. um, and Anne, thank you very much uh, for joining us this afternoon. And uh, for everybody else who joined us. Um, we hope you have a, a nice, re a nice uh, rest this long weekend. <laughs> Nearly didn't get the words out right there. But thanks very much for joining us. As Anne said, if you need uh, any more information from us, we're still all working. Uh, just contact your, your local account manager and we'll get in contact with you. Thanks and have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. Cheers, everyone. Take care. Bye now.